The history of horror in cinema goes all the way back to the very first years of the medium. While these early 19th century shorts didn't necessarily have the same intent as a modern horror film, they did feature common genre themes, like devils, skeletons, vampires, and nightmares. They weren't usually meant to scare, but to make you laugh. Like most films of the era, they were only a few minutes long at most, had no camera movement, and had very simple narratives. Unsurprisingly, the first filmmaker to dabble in horror was Frenchman Georges Méliès, who basically created the genre of science fiction cinema. His most famous film was 1902's A Trip to the Moon, which was massively influential to silent sci-fi and gave us the iconic image of a rocket crashing into an anthropomorphic moon. The earliest surviving film with horror themes is his 1896 short A Terrible Night. It's about an oversized bug, a trope which would become popular in horror starting in the 1950s. While this isn't as giant of a bug as in those movies, it would still be a bit horrifying to wake up and find this in your bed. This short doesn't have the special effects Méliès would later be known for, as the bug is just a simple prop controlled by wires. This one is definitely meant to be comedic, and like the majority of 19th century movies, consists of only one shot. There is some debate over the release year and title of this short, which isn't shocking given the imperfect records of 19th century cinema. Also made in 1896 is The Vanishing Lady, which includes his first use of the famous substitution splice trick, where he would carefully match up two frames in order to give the illusion that one thing had instantly changed into another. The technique is used here to recreate a magic trick where a woman disappears. The illusionist, played by Méliès, also conjures up a skeleton, and this all takes place in front of a painted backdrop for the stage setting. Next, Méliès directed House of the Devil, which is the earliest film about the devil, but given the portrayal here is also basically the first vampire film. The demonic character is credited as Mephistopheles, an agent of the devil that originated in German folklore and literature. Here he has the ability to transform into a bat, and is eventually defeated by a crucifix, tropes which became inextricably associated with vampires in the 20th century. The demon also summons ghosts, a cauldron, and a skeleton. The transformations and sudden appearances were all accomplished with a splice trick. House of the Devil is longer than the first two at over three minutes, which was a pretty long runtime for 1896. Then comes A Nightmare, and as the title suggests, it's about a man having an unpleasant dream. He sees a woman, but she turns into a minstrel in blackface playing a banjo. That's followed by a clown and a creepy moon with a face, years before Méliès employed similar imagery in A Trip to the Moon. The moon bites the man, and he punches it in retaliation. The dreamer is clearly terrified, but the audience was presumably meant to find this humorous. This was the first explicit dream sequence to be put on film. As Méliès often did, this was filmed outdoors with painted backdrops, with multiple backdrops being used here to show the environment changing. For The Haunted Castle, Méliès remade House of the Devil, even reusing the set from that film. This version is shorter and simpler, with a runtime under a minute. This is one of the first films to be hand-painted with color, and the main character wears a bright red outfit to help him stand out from the gray environment. Méliès often included the idea of inanimate objects moving on their own, like a chair in this film that moves out of the way right before the man tries to sit in it, leading to him comically falling over. Then a ghost appears and transforms into a skeleton, and a guard in a suit of armor. Finally, a devil appears, again credited as Mephistopheles. In The Bewitched Inn, inanimate objects again come to life, here in a haunted hotel room. The guest's boots walk away on their own, his coat flies around the room, and the bed disappears when he tries to lay on it. The substitution splice trick makes things disappear, and wires are used to move objects around the room. Unsurprisingly, the viewer never gets any explanation as to what was causing the commotion. The basic idea would be reused by Méliès multiple times, as well as imitated by other filmmakers. The final Méliès horror-themed film I'll discuss is the three-minute-long Devil in the Convent from 1899. Méliès again depicts a devil, but here he invades a church, scares some nuns, summons some imps, and redecorates with gargoyle statues. He even sits on a large statue of a frog for some reason. The priests eventually fight back and even do some summoning of their own, bringing in St. Michael the Archangel to fight for them. This is all accomplished with almost constant substitution splices. The short was probably intended to satirize the Catholic Church. 
It was made in the midst of the Dreyfus Affair, where a French Jewish artillery officer was falsely accused of treason. Melies made a film series portraying Dreyfus as innocent, so we know he was on the opposite side of the issue as the Catholic Church at the time. In the next decade, Melies continued to produce horror, including devil-themed films, as well as popular science fiction and fantasy movies. The earliest surviving British film with horror themes comes from director George Albert Smith, who later invented Kinemacolor, the first effective color movie process. Smith was also a hypnotist and claimed to be a psychic. His 1897 short The X-Rays features the tidal radiation being used to show the skeleton of a couple on a bench. A man comes up to them with a box helpfully labeled with the words X-Rays in large letters. The trick is accomplished through actors wearing skeleton suits, and we even see the metal parts of the woman's umbrella. Smith applies Melies' substitution splice trick to show the couple transforming into skeletons and back. X-rays had actually just been discovered in 1895 in Germany, earning Wilhelm Röntgen the Nobel Prize. The first American horror film was directed by Edwin S. Porter, who revolutionized cinematography and editing in the following decade, with Life of an American Fireman and the Western The Great Train Robbery. Porter's less-than-a-minute-long The Cavalier's Dream features Mephistopheles, like in Melies' films. It also has a witch who transforms into a young woman, of course utilizing the substitution splice. The identity of Porter as director has been disputed by film historians, with some claiming that it was made by Vitagraph Studios founders Albert E. Smith and animation pioneer J. Stuart Blackton. The Cavalier's Dream was distributed by Edison Studios, which was of course owned by and named after the inventor Thomas Edison. The final film I'll mention is the oldest surviving Japanese film, Maple Leaf Viewing, shot by Sunakichi Shibata. The short blurs the line between documentary and narrative, as it is a record of two very well-known kabuki actors performing, but also tells a fictional story. The distinction between these two modes of film hadn't really developed yet, especially in Japan. The film was not publicly shown right away, as it was meant to be seen only after the actors passed away. It relates to the horror genre due to its inclusion of a yokai disguised as a princess. Yokai are supernatural beings from Japanese folklore that are often compared to demons, but the comparison isn't 100% accurate. Maple leaf viewing consists of two static shots, and was shot outdoors with a painted backdrop like many others discussed in this video. Unlike most of those, however, this has no special effects or camera tricks. While obviously quite crude by modern standards, these pioneering films established some of the iconography and visual effects common in horror cinema. All of them are in the public domain and viewable online. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe. If there are any other topics you'd like to see me cover, let me know in the comments.